Out of all the Premier League teams so far in this transfer window, Liverpool have been the most quiet by far. With only one confirmed permanent transfer, that being Adrian leaving Liverpool on a permanent free transfer to Real Betis. Between Liverpool seemingly missing out on every single one of their transfer targets to now having to go through their first season without Jurgen Klopp since he was hired in 2015. To having a new and fairly inexperienced head coach in on a slot, someone I made a video about a while ago, I can get and completely understand the uneasiness around Liverpool and their fans at the lack of movements within the club. We are in late July and Liverpool have made no moves to their roster, but in recent days Liverpool have been getting heavily linked to the 23-year-old Japanese international and former Real Madrid player Intake Fuso Kubo. Now reports are conflicting with many outlets saying that the deal is is very close while others including Fabrizio Romano says that the deal is not close and nothing concrete has been agreed between Liverpool and Kubo. If Liverpool won Kubo then it's rumored that Liverpool will have to pay his 55 million pound release clause from Real Sociedad for the 23 year old so the only real negotiations that Liverpool have to make to get this transfer done is with Kubo himself. But if the reports are true, if Liverpool are set to get Kubo, what will he bring to this team under on a slot? And is the release clause of 55 million pounds too much to pay for the 23 year old? Well, that's what we'll be talking about today. So what's going on everyone? You are listening to Back of the Net here. I hope you're all doing well. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Take Kubo started playing club football at the age of seven in Japan. And in 2011, after several good performances for Barcelona's football camps, he earned a trial at La Masia and he would eventually join the team. And in the 2012-2013 season, he would go off and score a whopping 74 goals in 30 games for Barcelona's La Masia Academy. And he continued to progress through the ranks at Barcelona. But in 2015, Barcelona were found to have violated FIFA's international transfer policy for under-18s, making Kubo ineligible for Barcelona. So he would then sign with FC Tokyo's youth team. And at FC Tokyo, he was promoted to the first team at the age of just 15 years old and eventually made his debut, setting a J-League record of 15 years, 5 months and 1 day, being the youngest player ever. Kubo then went on to become the youngest goal scorer in J-League history. And in 2019, after a loan spell, and then eventually becoming a regular starter at FC Tokyo. Kubo then joined Real Madrid on a five-year deal for a reported 2 million euros. After pre-season with Real Madrid where he looked pretty impressive, he had several loan spells with Mallorca, Villarreal and Girona, but he failed to make a huge impact on any of those loans, playing a fairly impressive 73 games, but only scoring just six goals and getting eight assists across a two-season time span at those three clubs. And on his return loan to Mallorca, he again just wasn't amazing but was pretty okay playing 31 games but only getting two goals and three assists. So in July 2022 with two years left on his contract Real Madrid cut their losses with the Japanese international by selling into Real Sociedad on a permanent transfer for a reported 5.5 million pounds but also saw Real Madrid keeping 50% of Kubo's rights meaning that whenever Kubo was to be sold in the future Real Madrid would get half of that transfer fee. And at Real Sociedad, Kubo would finally start looking at home and showcase the talent that he had and we saw glimpses of while on loan at Mallorca. In the last two seasons, Kubo has played 85 games for Sociedad and got himself a decent return of 16 goals and 14 assists while seeing himself also get his first taste of Champions League football last season with Sociedad. Kubo is a player with extraordinary creativity on the ball with a very high level of ball retention. His chance creation is extremely high for his position showing that he is very good at creating clear-cut chances for his team while also being very sulky and very effective on the ball in the dribbling department. Kubo is extremely effective at carrying the ball into space, carrying the ball into the final third from the right wing and creating chances or taking shots and overall just contributing significantly to his team's output in the final third. Even though his overall numbers may suggest that he is weak in the final third, Kubo is very good in the final third, especially at chance creation. Now, there is times where Kubo can get dispossessed slightly too easily, and his finishing is lacking. But all in all, Kubo is an extremely exciting, high-paced player with a good potential that is capable of magical moments. Kubo has an extreme agility to him, he has a good burst of pace, and his vision is very impressive. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Kubo does still have a lot of room for improvements, but Arne Slot is a pretty good manager at developing younger players, so I'm excited to see what will happen with Kubo's development if he ever joins Liverpool. So where and how will Kubo fit into this Liverpool team? Now, Kubo is a right winger. He isn't capable, as far as I'm concerned, 
as playing anywhere in the squad other than the right wing. To me, he is an out and out right winger that is a left footed player. And although you have guys like Salah, Diaz, Jota and maybe even Nunes all being able to play out there, overall Kubo is pretty much needed at right wing in the squad. Salah is getting on being 32 years old now and none of the other forwards for Liverpool outside of Ben Doak are right wingers as their primary position. So Kubo will give much needed depth at that position but equally he would allow Liverpool to maybe play around tactically a little bit if they for some reason want Salah down the middle at the end of a game, well then Kubo could play at the right wing position. Kubo will also help out the front three with the charge creation, which is something that no team can have too much of. I also wouldn't be surprised if Slot maybe wants to play Salah down the middle for some games and Kubo will be a starting right winger for a large portion of games. To give either Salah rest or let Salah play down the middle, I think that'd be a good option as well. So I do think there is a role for him. I don't know if he'll be an instant start at Liverpool, but I do think there's a role for him. I think he could add good depth, good quality depth, and good chance creation when needed. So how much should Liverpool look to pay for the Japanese international? Well, personally, I actually think the release clause is a good price to pay. In this market, to get someone that is only 23 years old and is as good as he is with the potential that he has, well, that's about the right price to pay. Kubo is far from world class yet, so to say that he is cheap at 60 million euros, well, I wouldn't agree with that. I think that is slightly untrue, but I think 60 million euros is a fair price to pay for him. I think Sociedad are getting a good price back, even though they have to give 50% of that 60 million so so 30 million euros will have to be going to Real Madrid I still think that's a good price to get and I think it's a good price to pay for Liverpool at 60 million euros for someone like Kubo I do suspect if Liverpool gets him then he'll come off the bench for them at least for the first season but overall I think the prospect of adding Kubo into Liverpool I think that could add good depth good youth to their forward line and although Kubo probably won't ever be a 20 goal or even 20 assist player a season for the Reds, he will add a lot of depth and a lot of creativity and some good chance creation to this Liverpool forward line. That is something that you can never have too much of.